Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And uh, in this video, we're going to cover the topic of buying real estate with little to no money and credit. So what's the conventional way of buying a property? Basically, you, you either do one or two things. You either get a loan, 20% down and 80% uh, loan. So for example, in a $300,000 house, you have to pay a down payment of $60,000 And in order to get a $240,000 loan, in order to get that loan, you have to have good credit and good income. And for a lot of people, uh, getting this down payment and, you know, getting, you know, having the qualifications that the bank wants is really, really hard. In fact, I heard the statistic that 90% of people in the United States don't qualify for a mortgage. And so it's very hard for the average person to, to buy a property. really hard now one of the things that i i do want to mention before i get into deep into topic is i totally forget that most people uh don't know that buying a house with little no money or credit uh little no money and credit is possible because i brainwashed myself uh with these topics for such a long time that when i go to talk with the general public with like whether it's friends or acquaintances or people i know i realize they're doing it kind of like the conventional way they're not either a getting a big discount discount or they're not, they're going to pay you know a lot of money just to get into that that real estate and they're not doing it with little to no money so there there's two preferences that I would I always have when it comes to buying real estate which is either get a big discount or don't bring your uh bring little to no money to the table to the deal right And the reason I say this is because I was recently talking to a friend who's going to buy a triplex in a major city at full market value. And my friend is now worried, like, you know, even though the rent is more than the the um, the mortgage, uh, I don't I honestly don't know why my friend's buying the house, because I didn't put that fear or anxiety into my friend. Basically, what happened is that my friend told me that, oh, my goodness, the rent is like. really not that much more maybe a thousand dollars more than than the uh, than the mortgage and i didn't even calculate the other things and you know i'm thinking in my head why'd you buy that and then i told my friend like hey i bought this property a hundred thousand dollar discount and my friend didn't even think it was possible right i was like what what <laughs> i was like you didn't know that it's like oh yeah right you didn't know that because i brainwashed myself to think this way but back to my point so Like my friend, everybody's just buying a traditional way, buying at full market value. Um, so, for example, a $300,000 house, I might buy it at $200,000. But if you buy it at $300,000, then you have to come up with a large down payment or you have to buy all cash, right? All cash, which just means you got cash in your bank account. You're not getting a loan and then you got to pay for it um, uh, just directly to the seller, right? So these are the really only the two main methods people know how to buy real estate in this country. And so what we want to do eventually is get to a point where we're not buying houses traditionally, because even if we have good money and good credit, usually my understanding is, let's say you have like 10 real estate loans, bank's not really going to lend you more. And I think it's because something called debt to income ratio. But if we buy properties creative, and there's a term, they say creative real estate or creative acquisitions, that just means buying real estate with little, no money, no credit, right? And there's a lot of tools in your arsenal to be able to do this. Um, in our group, if you join our group, we certainly do teach all the concepts. So I'm doing a plug for our group right now. If you're interested in joining our group, go ahead and click the Google form link below, or you could email us in the about page, find out our email address and, and go from there as well. But I'm just going to give you an easy example of a creative uh, offer, non-traditional offer, not one of these two offers of how you can get a property, no, no money, uh, no credit. And I don't know if you heard of seller financing, so I'll just kind of explain what that is. So let's say, Like you're dealing with a seller, maybe you call for rent sign, right? You call for rent sign and the seller or the, the you have a landlord. And then, you know, it's, even though the it's a for rent sign, you ask the landlord, like, hey, have you thought about selling your properties? They might say yes, right? 
and and you don't have any money right so it's totally possible you don't have any money bad credit but you're you're you want to engage in real estate right and so if you have no money no credit what you can do is offer a solution to the landlord because there might be benefits for the landlord that most of your average uh, run of the mill sellers do not think of so for example you know, if you have a property that's free and clear and that you've owned for many, many years, you might have a tax problem. This is hypothetical, but it's a it's a big possibility. You might have a tax problem. So one of the things that you may uh, propose to, let's say, this tire landlord is that the landlord doesn't, you know, I'm not going to give you $300,000 for the house today. I'll just give it to you over time. Kind of like a bank. You know how a bank gets like $1,200 a month in mortgage payments? You be the bank. The, the, the house is free and clear. There's no loan at attached to it. So you just go ahead and create some loan documents, pay over time. So that's what they call seller financing. So instead of bank financing it, the seller is essentially becoming the bank, right? And the funny thing is, is that these types of deals will probably happen more with experienced uh, people, landlords, educated investors, because they understand the benefits of doing it that way. And uh, it's kind of like do, you know winning the lottery too. So when you win the lottery, there's two options. First option is the 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 lump sum. You know you get that big payout, or you could get payments over time. What they call an annuity. So it's the same thing. If you actually take payments over time, it might not as look as attractive to your average person, but to someone who's more experienced, they know they're going to be making bank, pun intended. So. Um, for example, if you didn't know, if you get a mortgage of 3%, the bank's actually making 50% on a 30-year loan. Same thing with 6%, a little bit more than 100% on 30-year loan. And then 200%, uh, I'm sorry, at 9.4% interest rate, they're actually making about 200% on, on the loan for a 30-year mortgage. And so any sane person uh, would probably like to have 30, many 30-year 30 notes, they call them mortgage notes, right, notes. And get them over time because if the rate of return is like 50 to 100 to 200 percent, why wouldn't you take them? Right. And if it's also going to lessen your tax burden, sure. Why, why wouldn't you take that? Right. So I'm not saying, you know, I'm not an accountant. I'm not a, you know, attorney. I'm not a financial planner. So I'm not saying that this will apply to you, but this is what you should do is that if you have a solution, talk about the benefits. Right. People, too many people, they just say, oh, let's just do seller financing and then don't try to um, educate, you know, consult on the benefits of why this is probably better for you, both better for you and me in a win-win situation than just doing it the, the traditional way, right? In fact, I had a friend who bought a property for $1, right? Uh, it's not this strategy, but it's a, it, there's other strategies in the tool belt that you can uh, use, but basically bought a property for a dollar, Three years later, sold that property for like a hundred fifty thousand dollar profit, and and we saw that property this year. So crazy stuff you can do, right? So as I talked about this, so let's say you 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 actually get that property, you buy it, um, you say, hey, Mister Seller, Mister Miss Seller, um, you be the bank, I'll pay you twelve hundred dollars a month. So that really solved this problem of getting that sixty thousand dollar down payment, right? And you don't have to come that, and that's a lot for people, a lot of people, and that's a lot for me too. Right. And so, um, again, so let's say you convince the, the seller to actually take this deal and do some seller financing. You know, you're going to pay them like they're a bank over 30 years. But here's the cool thing, right? You're actually not going to pay this because you're going to get a tenant in there, get them for $1,800 a month, and then make that little spread in between. So the tenant is just paying off that property for you. So that's kind of how you generate the wealth. So even though these deals aren't the majority of deals out there, if you put some time and energy to, to market yourself and find the right sellers, yes, this is totally possible. In fact, one of our instructors bought 300 properties or controls 300 properties on a teacher salary or did it on a teacher salary, right? And so if someone who's making like $30,000 a year can do this, uh, why can't I, right? Why can't you? We all can do it, all right? So this is a Korean Atlanta mentorship. Um, if you're interested in joining our group, learning more about creative acquisitions, creative real estate, buying properties uh, 
little to no money down, go ahead and click the Google form link below, or you can email us at our um, email address. You can find that out on the about page of the YouTube channel. All right. Have a great day, everybody, and we will speak soon. Mm -hmm.